as you know, God doesn't make mistakes. God made us smart enough to know when it wasn't going to work for us. That's the, that's the beauty no. of giving us freedom of choice. No. Yes. Why are liberal celebrities like Whoopi Goldberg and Al Sharpton using God to defend abortion? And the bigger question is, does their position have merit or basis in truth? Let's find out. Last week, Whoopi Goldberg was debating abortion and the overturning of Roe with Elizabeth Hasselbeck when Whoopi unveils this bit of theological commentary. As you know, God doesn't make mistakes. God made us smart enough to know when it wasn't going to work for us. That's the, that's the beauty no. of giving us freedom of choice. No. Yes. Whoopi says, God made us smart enough to know when it wasn't going to work out for us. And that that's the beauty of giving us freedom of choice. We're going to come back to that nugget shortly. But before we do, we also have the irreverent Al Sharpton appearing on MSNBC's Morning Joe, where he says real Christians ought to be incensed for using the Bible, for people using the Bible as a reason to be against abortion. Take a listen. Real Christians that really study the Bible ought to be incensed. I, I've been a preacher since I was a little boy. I am incensed and insulted that they have hijacked the Bible and Jesus to distort and misquote well, it's not even misquote, create quotes that are not there to justify a right wing uh, kind of ideology that would take away the rights of women and then schedule to take other people's rights. Before we get into the why, let's go ahead and deal with this false narrative that the Bible doesn't address abortion. The Bible absolutely addresses the issue of an unborn child in the womb. First, John the Baptist leaped for joy in the womb of his mother. Now, someone may say that the fetus kicked, and that's all. Yeah, the fetus did kick. But the same word in the Greek, the word brephos, that is used to describe John in the womb, is used elsewhere in Scripture to describe and to denote a, a living child outside of the womb. Further, in Exodus 21, verses 22 through, verses 22 through 25, it discusses the issue of an alter, altercation between two men that would cause a pregnant woman to deliver. The scriptures teach that if the child is born and lives, there's to be a punishment as determined by the judges. However, if the unborn child dies as a result of the injury, the punishment's death. Specifically, the scripture says, Thou shalt give life for life. So what's going on? Well, many of you know, on Friday, June the 24th, 2022, the Supreme Court of the United States officially reversed a 1973 ruling on Roe v. Wade that had made abortion the de facto law of the land. This ruling corrected a wrong that had been in place for almost 50 years when, it, when the Supreme Court declared that there is no inherent right to abortion guaranteed in the Constitution of the United States. Now, the ruling did not make abortion illegal. It merely pushed the issue back to the individual states. The Democrat Party and the Biden administration have made it their highest goal to codify Roe as law and officially make abortion a legally protected federal right. Because America is a center-right country politically, and a majority of Americans do believe that abortion should be illegal or at best extremely rare, the left has initiated a propagandist campaign to convince centrist, moderates, and persuasive Christians that God approves abortion. There's an active campaign to convince you that abortion is not immoral or sinful. In fact, they want to convince you that abortion is actually good because God gave you the ability to choose it. But the question still remains, does God support or condone abortion merely by giving humans the free will to choose to have an abortion? The answer is absolutely not. It is true that God gave men a free will. We're not automatons. We're not pre-programmed to carry out a predetermined set of steps. But any assertion that God supports a decision merely because He created us with the ability to choose is absurd. That's a logical fallacy known as a slippery slope. It connects a premise to a ridiculous outcome with no supporting evidence. It could also be considered a causal fallacy because it incorrectly concludes that a cause is related to an effect. Let's look at it this way. Do we have free will to choose abortion? Yes. If we conclude God condones abortion because we have free will from God to choose it, then we must also logically conclude that God condones and supports murder, rape, theft, and many other heinous crimes. After all, people use their free will to choose to do those things. 
And herein lies the crux of the problem. Listen to a statement that Whoopi kept repeating. And God knows my heart. And God knows most everybody's heart. Whoopi says that God knows her heart. She actually got that part right. Let's look at what God said about the human heart. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Because of Adam's fall in the garden, our free will is bent toward sin. That's why we, cho that's why we choose the things that God hates, and, and that's why we sin. Ultimately, it boils down to this. Just because we can do a thing doesn't mean we should do a thing. And suggesting that God supports or condones abortion because He created us with free will is illogical. And even worse... It's blasphemy. Isaiah 5.20 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness.